<clears throat> Psalms chapter 50, 66 to the chief musician, a song or a psalm. Make a joyful noise unto God, all ye land. Oh, when you walk in some of these churches today, it's a noise. But it's not a joyful unto God. The joyful noise they make is unto the flesh, unto themselves. God doesn't appreciate it, and God doesn't think it's holy. Sing forth the honor of his name. You can take some of those, those music and those lyrics, you can write them down and give them to your girlfriend or your boyfriend as they're sung, and you wouldn't know if it was to them or to God. You ought to praise God's holy name. Make his praise glorious. And the junk that's the music today of the Christians is not glorious. It's not praising. They add the word praise music, but it's not. It defies the Bible. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works. Again, this is terrible, not mean. This is terrible in how... All is God. How much he does things and his uh, ability to do things that man can't comprehend. Something we can't do. Something we can't explain. I mean, you sit Moses down and say, Moses, okay, explain to us how that Red Sea opened up. You can't. Through the greatness of thy power... Shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee? Well, that's an interesting statement. God is all powerful that everybody that is against him, past, present, and yet future, will bow the knee at the Lord Jesus Christ and proclaim, Thou art God. All these people are fighting Christians today in America. They will bow the knee before the God that they resist and rebel and don't believe in. That's a wonderful God. You know Satan will bow the knee at God? Is it Job 41, I think it is? He talks about Leviathan. Ain't nothing you can do to Leviathan or Satan. He doesn't fear you. But when, when God tells Satan, you can't do it, Satan can't do it. That's the power of God. You better have that power on your side. When you got ailments and troubles in your life, you better have... Listen, if it is of Satan, God has the power to tell Satan, no, that's too much. Don't do it. God has the power to put things in our life. And there's nothing we can do. And God has the power to take care of things that we've done ourselves. we got a God of all power. He has the power that he's going to resurrect us one day. All those that have died. All those that are still living at the rapture. He's got that power. All the earth shall worship thee. You want to apply that verse today? And you definitely got it out of context. That's a millennial passage. That wasn't even time of the, of the songwriter. The Indians over in, in, in North America that they didn't even know about weren't worshiping God. Read the read the, the the antics of those Indians, how they kill each other and, and sacrifice and stuff like that. That wasn't to God. They don't teach that in the public schools. And shall sing unto thee. You know what's a shame to that verse? There are unsaved people that sing to the Lord and Christians fall for it and buy their albums and their CDs and their mp3 players and all that and they have been asked and interviewed when have you received Christ and they will come out and tell you never there's one woman caught completely in adultery and yet she's too popular
They shall sing to thy name. What's that word? Selah. The millennium. You think the Jews over there singing about to God in Jerusalem today? Listen, what we just read in Leviticus, they were kicked out of the land. They're not in the land. Look at all the sins that they did. America's following right behind Judah. Do you realize of all those sexual sins that we read in Leviticus is going on in America and now it's becoming legal? Do you think sodomite marriages are something to cry about and raise, raise a temper? You wait till other things are legal. It ain't done yet. <clears throat> Come and see the works of God. A testimony. What God has done. <coughs> God is always working. God is always doing something. To somebody. Maybe to you. I had a thing today where I set up a doctor's appointment Tuesday. It was for $80. Well, I went to a clinic today. It was $100, but... With a coupon, it came down to $80. That's a work of God. There's no way I could have done that. And if I didn't have the coupon, she was going to give it to me. And print it out herself, but I had the coupon. That's God. And God had just given us amount of money to pay for the things that we had today. That's God. That's a work of God. He is terrible in his doing toward the children of men. And again, that's not some you know the world would read that verse and have fun with it. Oh the the, the snow, the, the the uh you know the, the droughts, the hurricanes, the the tsunamis, the earthquakes, the volcanoes, and that's not the word of terrible. You know what a terrible thing that he has done to all the children of men? He's long suffering that he hasn't killed you before you've gone off the hill. Hell. There are some people out there, you look at, man, they're just so wicked. Why are they living? Long-suffering of God. That's a terrible act of God. That's a wonderful act. A terrible, wonderful act of God for the children of men. You would think, how many auto accidents? There was a fire here in uh, Daytona Beach, and the guy wasn't home. You got to give God all the credit, even when you don't even know what happened. You come up to that red light, which always bothers me, and lack of patience, and I'll admit it, I put it under the blood. But I don't know if that was a green light if there would have been an accident up ahead. A terrible act to me would be giving me a red light. Yeah, I mean, nasty God gave me a red light, but a terrible act of God would be a wonderful thing to prevent me from pain and suffering, maybe death. He turned the sea into dry land. That was a terrible, wonderful act. You want to go try it? These people keep talking about, let's see you try it. Go to the Atlantic Ocean, Daytona Beach, park the water so we can walk on dry ground to Africa. So I can see missionaries I know and love there. You can't do it. And you know what that also, the sea and the dry land, that defies nature. And not only did he do that, he did it the Jordan River for Joshua. He did it for the Jordan River in Elijah. He did it for the Jordan River for Elijah. And the Bible speaks it was dry ground on the bottom of a seafloor. On the bottom of a river that overflows its bank, it was dry water. That's a terrible Wonderful, great act. They went through the flood on foot. It's funny how it says flood. But they were on dry ground. And if you read over in Corinthians, there's a thing that is, it looks like, and you don't have to take me on this, but it looks like the water went up and over their head. So like those trellises you see at an outdoor wedding. They just walk right through it, water on the right, water on the left, and maybe water above the, at least a cloud. 
That's a wonderful thing that God's done. They did. No, there did they rejoice in him. When they got to the other side, they were playing their, their, their songs. Miriam was dancing, and they were just praising God. The enemy was killed. And then they came to, there was no water. The water was bitter, and they start their griping and complaining. He ruleth by his power forever. And there's the power of God. You know, when a medical doctor brings somebody back to life, don't go pat yourself on the back. Because the power of God is, if God wants you dead, there is nothing or no money or anything, whatever you got, will not bring you back to life. God is ruler forever. Right now, Satan has the domain of this world, but God is the ruler. And it's by his power that everything is. And everything that will be. His eyes behold the nations. Yes, America. England. Russia. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Selah. Pride. You can't find pride with God. They're over there in Russia today. And they're lifting up their gold, silver, and bronze. Look at us. And God's against it. We just got this big football trophy for the end of the year football game. God's against it. Look, I got the ring from, from the ball game. God's against it. That's exalting yourself. Look at what we did. We're number one. And God's against it. Sheila is, listen, you're coming out of the tribulation period. There's nothing but pride and arrogancy. The Bible says in Job 41 that he is the king over the children of pride. <clears throat> oh, bless our God. Who's the our God? The Jewish God. Not the God of the heathens. Not the God of that church. Not the God of them people. The God of the Jews. Ye people. Doesn't say Jews. Everyone. And make the voice of his praise to be heard. Really? Really? You mean you can sit there and, and shout and, and, and be loud playing games and stuff like that, but when it comes to singing to the Lord, you can't let your voice be heard? That's against the Bible. You are defying the Word of God. Which holdeth our soul in life. God controls your soul, not Satan. It's your free will to do what God told you to do or rebel against God. You, <coughs> excuse me. You do what God tells you to do, your soul will be preserved. You rebel against God and your soul will be put into hell. And suffer is not our feet to be moved. You know, once you get to New Jerusalem, once those Jews get to New Earth, well, Will we sin and have the tree of life and the, and the tree of good knowledge again? Won't Satan be loose? Won't it happen all over again? No. I tell you one thing. If you don't, when you're first saved, don't ever read the book of Revelation first. Man, I read that book after I was saved. Man, I thought I was going to lose it when I got to heaven with those fallen angels. Gee, am I one of those angels? Yeah, Satan almost had me. I'm not one of them angels. I'm forever settled in heaven. I'm in heaven right now. I'm just not enjoying it because of this body and being on this earth. <clears throat> For thou, O God, has proved us. Go back and read the wilderness journeys. We don't have water. We don't have food. We don't have water. Moses, you're good. Man, you did boo. God would test them to see what things, how they would react. I want you to go out, get the manna bright and early in the morning. I want you to gather so much. 
All right, on this day, I want you gathered twice as much because tomorrow is the Sabbath. And on the Sabbath, they went out looking for it and wasn't there. And God's like, I'm not quoting the verse, but what is these people's problem? As silver is tried. The Bible records that the word of God is as silver purified seven times. You take those people who are the Jews, you take John chapter 1, that is the word, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, those Jews have been in and out of the thick. Because they're God's people. They were supposed to be the example of the nations. And because they weren't, because they had the special privilege of God, God has threw the hammer at them. But he ain't done with them. Silver is, in your Bible, redemption. He's going to buy back those Jews that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior today. And at the end of tribulation, those that do what he tells them to do, <coughs> he'll bring back. Thou brought us, brought us, brought us into the net. Oh, that's not a good thing. I'm scrambling in the net. That's because of their sins. God wanted to bring them in the land and settle them. Thou latest affliction upon our loins. Your lap. Because you rebelled against God. History of the Jew will, pro will proclaim these verses as very much so. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. Airplane. World War II. You know, the whole, na the whole world was upset because one guy was killing the Jews and you had airplanes bombing Paris, bombing England, bombing Germany. You think I'm lying? We went through the fire and through the water. Submarine. That's the first time that Adolf Hitler had perfected the, the, the submarines, the U-boats. He used them during World War I, but he perfected them in, in World War II. You know how much those submarines or those U-boats destroyed the Allies? You know, had Adolf Hitler not hated the Jew, do you know what would happen? I guarantee we'd be speaking German in America. Because had he not gone against the Jews, he would have conquered England, and then he would have come over here and attack America for attacking him. It was none of our business, so God sent Japan to come over. And they won the battle. You know, they never fixed Pearl Harbor for us, but we went over there and fixed their cities. We buy their Hayatachis. We buy their Subaru, uh, their, their uh, Kawasaki's. You know, the, the leading brands of the motorcycles and the electronic, uh, electronic toys that we buy from Japan were cities that were targets during World War II by the Americans. Toshiba. <clears throat> but thou brought us out of the uh, wealthy place. Babylon, uh, Mystery Babylon. You read all the stuff that she's going to have in Revelation. She makes Walmart look like a five and dime mother and father store. Go over there and read all the stuff that she has that she's going to sell to all the people with the 666. She's going to be a wealthy nation. And when she falls and, and, and is judged and cast in the sea, all the, sailor, all the sailors are going to weep and lament. I will go into thy house with burnt offerings. That's what you're supposed to do. The law. And after the wealthy city, the, the millennium, there's the tabernacle, there's the temple. There's worship, Ezekiel 48. <coughs> Ezekiel 47, 46. 
I will pay thee my vows. There's that vows again. Now watch the Bible say, which my lips have uttered. These are vows that you've spoken. Watch. With my mouth have spoken when I was in trouble. Now you're in a foxhole and you promised God everything under the sun to get you out and God got you out. God is going to hold you accountable for what your words were. Oh Lord, if you do this, I will, and you better go back, you better talk to God, and you better fulfill that vow. And you better hope it's not a vow that God does not want you to do. It better not be a sinful vow. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatlings. With the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Selah. The millennium. And the tribulation. Come in here all ye that fear God. And I will declare what he has done for my soul. Open testimony. Telling people what God has done for them. I cried unto him with my mouth. And he was extolled with my tongue. And does your mouth and your tongue please God? Or is it fleshy? You give your mouth over to worldliness and stupidness? Or do you give it over to God? If I regard iniquity, if I please with it, in my heart the Lord will not hear me. <coughs> God will not hear you if you've got sin in your life. That's what the verse says. God's not answering my prayers. Well, you better see what's in your heart. But verily God has heard me. He's got rid of iniquity. He's not into iniquity. He's saying verse 18, if I was in iniquity, if I enjoyed it in my heart, but verily God has heard me, so I'm not in iniquity. I'm a sinner. All of sin comes to show the glory of God. But I've gotten right. I've gone in the Old Testament where we are. I brought the sacrifices I'm supposed to bring. I'm right by that. Us today, 1 John 1, 9, put it under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. And attend means to be there. Imagine you're praying to God and God's sitting right there with you. I heard you. Again, he answers prayer by yes, no, not now. But I've heard you. If you are his son and you don't have iniquity in your heart, but he hasn't answered my prayer. You know, there's been prayers by saints for someone to get saved and they've died in 20, 30, 40 years after that, that person's gotten saved. There have been prayers answered by God when the person has been dead. Paul prayed for the peace in Israel. That has not yet happened. Blessed be God. Make God happy. God makes us happy. Which has not turned away my prayer. Nor his mercy from me. And what a great wonderful God that we have. Oh Lord my God. When I in awesome wonder. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. 
shall come. 